he go like this. <laughs> at this point, he looks at me and he's like, "Oh my God, man, I'm on M. I'm on M. No, dude, you're not on M. Oh, don't you feel like you're on M? No. In fact, I need to keep running. We do not promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. This video has been created strictly for harm reduction purposes. Synthetic mushrooms, or it's more accurately called 4-acetoxy-DMT, is a legal in many countries psychedelic compound which mimics the effects of organic magic mushrooms. Basically, what happens when you eat organic magic mushrooms is your body converts the psilocybin into a compound called psilocin, also known as 4-hydroxy-NN-dimethyltryptamine, and it's the psilocin which is responsible for all of these psychedelic effects. I mean, at least that's what people believe. You see, 4-ACODMT, also called psilocetin, is largely believed to be a psilocin prodrug. Now, because synthetic mushrooms, or 4-acetoxy-DMT, also converts into psilocin within the body, it is believed that the effects of these two compounds are pretty much the same. But, unfortunately, saying that they're the same would just be too easy. There's kind of uh, a divide here. Some people claim the effects are identical, and others uh, state that the effects can be very different. Some people say that psilocetin is shorter lasting, whereas organic shrooms uh, last a little bit longer. Others say that organic mushrooms are lighter and easier to handle, whereas with the synthetic variant, it can be a lot darker and more challenging. But at the same time, there's people that kind of take either position. Now, as for what the psychedelic experts are saying, if there actually exist any psychedelic experts, the researcher, David Nichols, he personally believes that the effects are indistinguishable. In fact, what he says is that in a clinical setting, you could give a person either psilocybin or psilocetin and they wouldn't be able to tell the two apart. They're interchangeable. As for whether it's safe or not, it is widely believed that for ACODMT, carries the exact same safety profile as psilocybin mushrooms do. In other words, they are very safe, at least physically speaking. Mentally is kind of another story. People who have a history of mental illness should probably avoid psychedelics in general. Now, for a complete guide on how to safely consume these, I will direct you guys to one of my older videos. It's called How to Shroom. And besides the dosage information, the same general guidelines would apply to this substance. Now, of course, the other huge concern with consuming 4-acetoxy-DMT, as with consuming consuming pretty much all illegal drugs is that because they're not regulated, no one really knows what they're getting. Uh, for this very reason and for other reasons, it is absolutely vital that you buy a test kit and you test every compound before you consume it. I will include a test kit link in the video description. Anyway, for the next part of this video, I'm just going to explain to you guys uh, the story of my own first ever time trying these mushrooms, or I guess it's kind of wrong to call them mushrooms, it's just a crystalline powder. But yeah, it was probably one of my most weird and bizarre trips. A lot of really weird things happened. Anyway, just give me one second while I go change into this lab coat and I stop pretending that I know what I'm talking about. Now to give you a bit of a backstory, when I did try it, I already had a handful of traditional psilocybin mushroom experiences under my belt, so I did have that to compare it to. I also had tried DMT several times and I had many LSD and 2CB experiences. I tried this one a little late in my psychedelic career. But regardless, I do have to say that this is a story from my past. I don't recommend that anyone watching follows in my footsteps. You need to do your own research before you make your own decisions. And you need to know that just because I may have had a certain experience, it's absolutely no guarantee that you are going to have a similar experience yourself. Anyway, let's get right into my story. So basically, I was dosing with a friend of mine who had some experience with mushrooms, but he had never tried uh, taking them in this form. He was kind of confused when I was trying to explain to him what it was we were taking, so I just told him that it converts into psilocin in your body, and he was like, okay, so that's what it actually is? Are you sure? I was like, yes. This is basically psilocin. I could tell that he kind of felt a little uncomfortable taking it just because he had never taken mushrooms in like a little pill before. I believe the doses that we decided on were uh, between 15 to 20 milligrams. This is one of those substances where for one person, what may be a dose where they don't really feel it that much, 
for another person can completely blow them out of the water. And I knew this going into the experience, that's why I made sure that we didn't take anything higher than a low to average dose. I'd also like to point out that we did reagent test our drug before we took it. Oh my gosh, I'm actually safe in this story. And our plan was, to go for a hike as we came up. It was a beautiful summer's day. In hindsight, it's a really stupid idea to try a new substance out in public in the middle of the daytime. I figured that with my experience of psychedelics, I was probably going to be fine. However, I was a little concerned because the trip that I had just before this was one that I made a video on. It's called Suicidal Shroom Trip. At this point in my life, I was kind of contemplating whether I really wanted to continue exploring psychedelics. And I was looking to this experience to kind of give me some answers on whether or not I could handle myself anymore while tripping. Anyway, so I remember we swallowed our little capsules with a glass of water, and immediately after ingesting it, we decided to head out. It was about a 25 minute walk to where the trail was from my house. I remember the effects first started to creep in right around the time that we got to the entrance of the trail. I wasn't really sure whether I was enjoying the come up or not. I remember looking to my friend who I believed had more mushroom experience than me and saying stuff to him like, okay, so this is gonna get better, right? Like, it doesn't really feel that great now. Well, I found this out after, but it was making him very nervous because he's thinking, isn't Adam supposed to know what this feels like? Hasn't he come up on LSD and DMT several times? Like he shouldn't be asking me these questions. I'm the newbie here. But I just really couldn't help it. I was feeling really anxious. I just remember as it came on, it was a very confusing feeling. My thoughts were slowly not making sense, but I was able to kind of push past this and look at some of the positives. For example, everything in my visual field looked kind of new. It's this feeling like your brain has just been transplanted out of your adult body and thrown back into your nine to 11 year old child body. So I was kind of enjoying this, not to mention my visual field was just lighting up like fireworks. Things were starting to morph and wiggle and move and everything looked so vibrant and bright. I just wanted to taste it. And this is where the story starts to get a little bizarre. Now we were tripping in a very small town. I had never in my life, well, I had never in this town seen a dwarf before. And as we're walking, we see this very little man in the distance walking this very big dog. So of course, since we're coming up, we think that our eyes are just playing tricks on us. I mean, like, obviously this is super intense and it's just shrinking him. We're looking at each other, just trying, you know, not to make it obvious that we're staring at him, even though we're probably just like this. So we soon realized that, no, 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 we're not tripping out. This is an actual little person, like an actual midget coming towards us, which is hilarious because most people say that I'm a midget because I'm five foot five, but this guy was actually shorter than me. The way the mushrooms were making him look was just so distorted. He had these really bulgy cheeks that looked rosy red and just soft and squishy. Like I just wanted to go up and kind of squeeze them and feel them a little bit. And his dog just looked really nasty. But we decided to talk to him. Uh, we asked him what his dog's name was. We're like, what's your dog's name? He told us his name was Starbuck. And I just kept thinking of coffee after that. I felt like I was in some kind of a Wizard of Oz movie. It was just the definition of very trippy. After this happened, things proceeded to get more and more strange. Not even a couple minutes had passed when directly in front of us, we heard a big splat. Lo and behold, there was a squirrel right in front of us, laying on his little back like this. He had fallen right out of a tree. How many of you guys have ever seen a squirrel fall out of a tree? Now he wasn't dead, he laid there for like a second and then he was just like, bah! and he popped back to life and he ran back up the tree. Now at this point, we're just like, okay. So we've seen a magical little guy and we've seen a squirrel that's trying to jump on our heads. What? kind of trippy shit is going to happen next. As for how I was personally feeling, um, it just kept climbing and climbing in intensity. At this point, I was struggling to maintain a positive outlook. I was having this feeling where I couldn't remember my thoughts even a few seconds after they passed. You feel like your memory is wiped and it's scary because you can get scared that you're gonna forget how to breathe. But I also remember that I wasn't trying to make it obvious that I was uncomfortable. Instead, I just tried to distract myself by climbing up rocks on the side of the trail and just continuing to keep the conversation light. But I could tell when I was looking at my friend's face that 
he was also getting more and more uncomfortable. And that's when I came up with the most brilliant idea that I have ever had. Well, that day at least. I looked at him and I said, you know what? We should jog. Let's, let's run. Now, the reason why I wanted to jog is because I figured it would help remind me that I had to breathe because you breathe harder when you're running and I was worried that I was gonna forget how to breathe. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have had this effect from mushrooms, but it's the exact same on 4-ACO-DMT. All of your limbs, well, your just body in general feels really heavy. It's like someone has tied a bunch of bags of rocks to your wrists, to your ankles, to your biceps, to your shoulders, to your waist, and everything just feels so weighed down. It's like it takes so much more well, first of all, strength and mental effort to just move your body. So as we were running, we, we felt very much like just hulking, oh, oh, like beasts that are made out of stone or something. It was incredibly challenging to run, but at the same time was also relieving because it cured my fear of not you know remembering to breathe. And also because we were actually doing something physical, it helped get our minds off of our panic and our fear that things were getting a little too intense to handle. So long story short, we actually ended up running for an hour and a half. We continued to run straight, and then when we got there, we decided to start running back. Now around the hour and a half mark, um, my friend wanted to take a break, and he decided to sit down in this big pile of rocks. And this is where things, well, this is where our trips just completely switch. I remember he was sitting there, and he was picking up little stones and just like, tossing them like this and making this funny giggling noise. He'd go like this. <laughs> and I'm just looking at him like, okay. He doesn't know he's being retarded. He has no idea. It's okay. I, I know retarded trigger word. I didn't mean to say that, but he was acting mentally handicapped. And at this point he looks at me and he's like, oh my God, man, I'm on M. I'm on M. And I'm like, I'm like, no, dude, you're not on M. No, man, this is M. Oh, don't you feel like you're on M? It's exactly the same. No. In fact, I need to keep running. Get up, we need to keep running. And he reluctantly got up and he continued running. And I led us right back to our house, which is actually interesting because as soon as I got in my front door, it was like all of my anxiety and fear and terror around losing control and being confused had just lifted. I instantly felt better. In fact, over the next 30 minutes, I pretty much sobered up and came right back. Which just goes to tell me that a huge reason why I was so uncomfortable was just because of the fact that I was in a very unknown environment. When you're first trying a new psychedelic, you want to make sure that your safe zone is in reach. There's this intense anxiety that forms around taking psychedelics in public. I don't know if it has to do with just the reason that it's not accepted by many people. And since set and setting are absolutely vital to having a good trip, that was my biggest mistake. Now, as for my friend, he was affected for longer than I was for some reason, but we both came to the conclusion that we needed a huge break from psychedelics at that point. They had just really stopped being both fun and enlightening for me. But anyway, for those of you who are curious uh, whether I thought it was identical to shrooms or not, well, the answer is I did. It felt exactly like mushrooms to me. Every part of it felt the same. If you want to help keep my channel afloat on the stormy waters of YouTube's algorithms, then follow the above link and show your support through Patreon. Anyway, that concludes this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed my story. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave it a big thumbs up, hit that like button. Now, I do wanna let you guys know that in an earlier video, I mentioned that I have some really exciting stuff in the works that is still coming. I mean, this I think this was a cool video, but this isn't exactly what I was talking about. Um, I also have a few surprises in the works. Well, by surprises, I mean I've got uh, some interesting collaborations that are going to be happening soon. Anyway, if you do support my mission, you can check out our Patreon page. Any help is greatly appreciated. Till next time, take care, guys. Always test your substances, and I will see you all in the next video. Hiccup. <laughs>